All right, let's move into the sauna. And I noticed you mentioned dry finish sauna. And I know a lot of the people in the health and wellness space, myself included, have the infrared saunas. Yeah. So talk about the difference there and if there's any value to the infrared. Talk about how you feel about the spectrum of different ones. Yeah. So let me put everybody at ease right away. I'm the only one that seems to have a case of the ass over infrared saunas. <laughs> you said it. And here, here's where it comes from. Um, infrared is a wonderful source of energy. It's been around uh, for a billion years, come from the sun. And so its exposure and influence benefiting Homo sapiens has been around since our existence, anywhere from several hundred thousand years, you know, you know, on, yes, you know, depending on how long, where you draw when Homo sapiens came in into existence. So uh, we've got a lot of uh, experience and adaptation to infrared. Here's the thing nobody else picked up on and nobody else is talking about. The infrared sun, sun rays from, from the sun, those infrared rays are very short waves. They penetrate just a little bit into our skin. And almost everybody listening today, has had an experience where they go out and they're stripped down and they're in the sun and they can feel this superficial warmth on their skin when you're out in the sun. And if you go behind a tree or something in a shadow, that warmth goes away and you want to get back in that sun. But it's very superficial. But when you go into a machine made by human beings who are motivated for money and not try to make you as healthy as possible. Then those rays are much longer and they penetrate much more deeper. And here's the problem I think, and I say think, I don't know for sure, is that we have bypassed all our several hundred thousand years of adaptation to this infrared rays that come from the sun. And we have no benefit and protection from those deeper rays. We can protect ourselves from the from the sun. We're acclimated to it. But they were never meant to go into our muscle and our bones, our deepest structures, and where we don't have any adaptation from that form of energy. So I personally recommend to all my clients that are working with me, don't get an infrared sun. Well, what happens if you got one? I've thought about that too. Keep it. Just don't use the infrared. Convert it. Go get yourself a dry finish heating element. You don't have to buy a new sauna. You spend all that money buying that big wooden box. Just go get the heating element and heat those rocks up and use the type of heat, the form of energy that has benefited humans for hundreds of thousands of years. Just the heat and not the deeper penetrating infrared sauna rays that come from infrared. So, that's my solution, my recommendation, why I'm concerned about infrared saunas. And again, I'll end it uh, where I started, that I'm the only one who feels this way. So if that makes you feel more comfortable and you know you want to just keep using your infrared, I guess that's what you're going to do. But if you're, you're listening you think that's a potential concern, a legitimate concern, why the heck not go get um, a dry finish you know, heating element, put it into your, your infrared sauna and start doing that. That's what I recommend. Spend your money on your health, not other crap. Makes sense to me. Interesting. How often are you jumping in the sauna? I do a sauna every single day. Now, sometimes I miss it. I'm traveling. That happens. But um, I, I bought a sauna. I, I, I got a membership. And by the way, if you're listening today, uh, uh, LA Fitness, uh, the YMCA, uh, many gyms have dry finish saunas. Uh, it's interesting to me that they don't have infrared. And one of the reasons is, my guess is possibly, maybe their general counsel is telling them, don't put the infrared in there because uh, 20 years from now, if everybody starts getting cancer, whew, they're going to come after us and sue us. So anyway, most of the gyms seem to stick with the dry finish and uh, most consumers buying them go into a, a, a showroom and you got some fancy pants uh, slick salesman talking them into, oh, it's not as hot and, you know, lower temperatures and you're more efficient. But 
the longest studies, uh, long-term studies, the ones with the most power, meaning the most number of participants in the study for the longest period of time, uh, look, looked at dry finish saunas. So um, they they recommend um, basically 175 degrees the exact. The longest, the biggest study was 174 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. And individuals who did it one to two times a week reduced uh, their mortality from heart attacks and strokes about 20%. But individuals who did it four to seven times a week reduced the mortality an astounding 53%. And more uh, from cardiovascular disease and overall mortality, all what we call all cost mortality or the rate of death in all diseases that during death during that particular time, all cause mortality was reduced about 20% in those doing it one to two times a week, but 45% if you did four, seven, four to seven times a week. So basically, you cut your risk of mortality, reduce that mortality rate in those uh, individuals in that study. And I think it was 20,000 people over 20 years, if I remember correctly, my numbers correctly. So uh, anyway, it's dose dependent. So the more the longer you do it, the more frequently you do it, the better the benefit. Doesn't mean that you should be doing it for like eight hours a day. That would be where I'd, I'd call cap on that. And I'd say that's like running, you know, simply running too long. Um, you want it brief and intense. So I recommend, uh, personally, I do it 30 minutes. I, I, I shoot for about 30, uh, maybe as short as 20. Uh, I don't think I've ever done longer than 45. Uh, so I'm, I'm somewhere around 30 to 40 minutes is typically where I'm at, and I do it every day. And uh, the last bit of uh, disease process improvement that they saw, I'll sh share, is in uh, even best best of all was in the area of dementia. They showed that those individuals reduced the rate of dementia, which is something that we have no effective treatment for whatsoever. Dementia was reduced in astounding. 65%. And given the scourge that dementia has in our society today, and how many people are going to struggle, and if you're listening today, I'm telling you, you're going to struggle with parents that have dementia. Uh, and you'll be up all night coming to talk to ER physicians about, you know, different things. Um, you can reduce that dementia, that astounding rate, 65%. And if you're listening to this and you're wondering, well, my God, if it's that effective, why in the world isn't this being shared with people? You're exactly right. It's not taught in medical school. You know, physicians should be aware of this and they should be opining and exhorting, extolling every human being that comes into their practice about the virtue of not just saunas, but hormetic uh, exercise, these brief, intense uh, stressors in our life. That which does not kill you makes you stronger. But the problem is we're not trained to do that. We're trained to give medicine. Why? Because let's face it, if you get medicine, you just get more of it as you age, but you don't get better, you get worse. So you it takes hormesis to actually improve a human being, to make you stronger, make you better. And if we got people better, we'd make no money in the system. And right now, if you don't know, the largest part of economy is not oil. It's not the Internet. It's not energy. Uh, it's 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 not uh, Amazon, you know, marketing, selling and commerce. It's one thing. Chronic disease, healthcare. It's the largest part of our economy. It's a huge pot of money. And if that's the case, there are a lot of influences trying to protect that money. And meanwhile, it's, it's achieved at your expense, literally, at you accumulating more disease and in the majority of people eventually killing you. That's right. So it's a system that literally benefits from your mortality, your pathology, your disease, and ultimately kills you. So turn it around. If you're fortunate to be listening to this great podcast, you're learning about the scheme that has been taking place probably since the 1920s, as long as that. And you can now turn yourself around and 
That's why, you know, humanity's got the most amount of disease we've ever seen at any point in our lifetime uh, or any point in our species existence, I should say, is, is right now uh, our, our present lifetime. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. Visceral fat causes inflammation throughout your body, leading to disease. It starts when you're young. It's the first expression of disease in the human body, and it continues throughout a lifetime. I tell people.